Hi, so this video we will look at decimals. Um, we've just looked at multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting with whole numbers. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with decimals, okay? So let's say decimals. And we'll just start off with adding and subtracting. So decimals, I always think, and we, we see the most in real life would be with money. And so I've got £4.32 and see I want to add £3.56. I'm a terrible straight lines. So when we add and subtract decimals, it's the exact same as what we did before. We just have to make sure that this, the decimal point, is in a straight line. And that's for me to maintain the place value of our digits. For example, if I said, let's do £4.32, and I'm going to add to that 60 pence. If I say, okay, well, that's 432, and the 60 pence would be zero, let's see, 60 pence would just be, you know, 60 pence like that. That doesn't quite make any sense, does it? Because the decimal for the 60 pence should be here, and the decimal for the four should be there. So you have to make sure that it's all in line because you want to add up the same. Um, same group. Okay, so I want to add together my units. I want to add together my tenths, which is in here. And I want to add together my hundreds, and so on and so forth. The next one will be thousands. All that. So, but yeah, I tend to think on this as, you know, money's a good way. You also see it in times as well, if you watch for the Olympics, you see tenth of a second, hundredth of a second. Pop up. But yeah, when you're adding and subtracting decimals, it's no different from regular adding and subtracting. All we need to do is make sure that this point stays in the same place. Okay? So this would just become 8, 8, and 7. Okay, so exactly the same as before. Multiplying is a little bit different. Let's have a quick look at multiplying. So some examples where we'll try and do, let's see if we can do 4 times 0 0.2. We'll try that one. Um, yeah, we'll just try this to begin with. Okay, so 4 times 0 0.2, that looks quite hard. That looks quite tricky. But what that's saying is, okay, I've got four lots of 0 0.2. I've got 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2. So I've got a 0 0.8. So you could do it that way if you wanted. You could keep adding, uh, well, my phone's gone off there. You could keep adding the sections. Okay. But a little cheat to do it would be to say, okay, well, let's ignore the decimal. And just say, right, well, I've got four times two. Okay, so ignore your decimal and just multiply the numbers together. So four times two is eight. And then look back at your, your answer to the question and say, well, how many numbers are after the decimal point in the question? Well, in this question, only one number is after decimal point. So therefore, my answer will have one number after the decimal point. So that's like a little cheat for that one. Okay. Try another one. Let's say we go for let's say two decimals this time. So say we do 0 0.3 times 0 0.5. And this is harder, isn't it? Because it's much harder to, to visualize, you know, 0 0.3 times 0 0.5. I mean, this one, I can understand that four sets of 0 0.2. But this time, oh, wait a minute, I can't do this method. I definitely have to do different methods. So we do the three times the five, which will give us 15. And then just like before, we say, how many numbers are after the decimal? Well, there's two numbers after the decimal. So my answer we'll have two numbers after the decimal. And that's pretty much all we need to remember for multiplying decimals. Let's try a really tricky one. Let's try one down. But we'll try it over here. What if I've got 1.2 times 4.6? Well, same again. Let's look at 12 times 46. So let's ignore the decimal. This brings us back to what we did last time. For this, I would do my table method. I would say 12 is 10 and 2 and 40 is 40 and 6, and then multiply the numbers together. We've got 400, 2 and 4 is 8, add 0. 6 and 1 is going to give me 6, add to 0, and 2 times 6 is 12. And then just add it all up. So the top line is 480, the bottom line is 72. Add those together, it's going to give me 15 and 5, so 552. So, if I ignore decimals, I'm going to get 552. 
how many numbers are after the decimal in the answer? Well, there's two of them. So I'm going to have two numbers after the decimal in my answer. So that's our, our only rule. Ignore the decimal, and then we put it back in at the end. Now, at this point, we haven't actually covered fractions just now as well. But if you wanted to think on, on this one in particular, you could actually imagine that as the same as saying, well, what I've got, I'll put it down here, 0 0.3 times 0 0.5. Well, we said before this was the tenths, didn't we? Okay. So that's actually the same as saying, well, I've got three tenths. That's the same as saying, I've got five tenths. And when we multiply our fractions together, we multiply the top line and we multiply the bottom line. So let's say I've got 15 one hundredths. And if I've got 15 one hundredths, then I've got 0.15. So it's the exact same way as doing it. Um, sorry, it's the exact same answer, but a slightly different way of doing it where you turn this into the, uh, into the fractions. Okay. So there's a few different ways of doing that. Dividing is probably the thing that people find the hardest. And I'll take another line off for dividing. Whoa, down here. So I'll, you know, I'll label these up. That was add, that was multiply. This one's now divide. Okay, and add and subtract are actually the same, aren't they? Add and subtract. This is so messy. How's this gotten so messy? <laughs> oh well, try and try and do your work neater than me. Uh, <laughs> so dividing right now. We can all. Last time we were doing things like, you know, one hundred and twenty-eight divided by four. Okay, we we're all quite comfortable doing that. But what happens if we have to divide by a decimal? So say I say, let's do the number, um, let's do 16 divided by 0 0.4. Ooh, that's quite funny, isn't it? Is that? Well, all we do is we say, well, I can't divide by 0 0.4, but I can divide by 4. So how do I get from 0 0.4 to 4? Well, I have to times it by 10. You need to make sure that you times everything by 10, so now I'll times... 16 by 10 as well. So because we're times in both terms by the 10, 10 effectively cancels itself out. And then it's just a normal divide. 4 into 1 doesn't go, carry the 1, 4 and 0 or 40. So you're just changing the, that's a bit like, which we haven't done yet, it's a little bit like fraction. So if you say you've got your, your pizza, you know, Break that into four. So each one of these is a quarter, yeah? Each one's a quarter. But instead of saying a quarter, I could also say, right, well, if I break up into eights, this is where my, my drawing skills will really fail me. If I break up into eights, you can see there, this is the same in here. These two bits are the same as this. Okay, so one eighth and an eighth are the same as a quarter, i.e. two eighths is the same as a quarter. Okay. And what you've done there is times the top and bottom by two. And that's what we're doing here because we're times in both terms by a, by a number it cancels out and makes gives us the same answer so let's try another one of them a bit harder this time what if it was 0 0.02 and i'm going to divide um 10.2 by that okay well i don't know a 0 0.02 times table however i'm quite good at a two times table I mean, i'm not amazing at it but you know, i don't want to brag or anything how do I get from 0 0.02 to 2? Well, I've got to times that by 100. So if I times it by 100, I have to do the same with this number as well. So I'll times that by 100, so that's going to become 1020. 0, 0. And then it's just a straightforward multiplication, uh, division. The very last thing I should probably point out, when we're actually multiplying, that brings us on to multiplying by tens. I'll do a separate video for that. I'll do a separate video. So that was a quick, oh yeah, I'll do a separate. That was a wee quick how to add and subtract. A very quick how to multiply when you've got decimals and then to divide by decimals. Okay. So keep your decimal point in the same place and then it's the same as add and subtracting. But the multiplying decimals, ignore the decimal and then add it in at the end. So here there was two numbers after the decimal. So it means my answer will have two numbers after the decimal. And when you're dividing, you need to multiply both terms by a number to give you a nice number to work with. So for here, for example, I don't want 0 0.4, I want 4. Here I don't want 0 0.02, I want 2. How do I do that? Well, I times this by 10, times this by 100. And I'll talk about that in the next video of why times in this by 10 will make it 4.